Rally protesting against anti-Hindu violence results in vandalized mosque. So I wanted to cover this story because it is like one of it's it's a just and it just lock in your mind an example of how Hindutva Hindu nationalists actually fail at protecting Hindus. Okay, this is a fantastic example of that. Okay, in late October. Shops, homes, and mosques were attacked during a rally in the small Indian state of Tripura. The incident happened during a protest held by the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, or VHP, a right-wing Hindu nationalist organization that was supposed to be in response to the egregious violence committed against Hindus in neighboring Bangladesh during the Durga Puja festival earlier that month. The scenes in Tripura are shockingly similar to the violence in Bangladesh that the mob was protesting against. According to the police inspector general, the damaged shops and houses reportedly belong to families uh, from the local Muslim minority community. Online coverage of the protests and violence in Tripura is trending on Twitter with the hashtag Tripura Muslims under attack in response to the hashtag for what happened in Durga Puja, which was uh, Bangladeshi Hindus under attack. Uh, Shekhar Dhaka, a local... Where is, tri where is Tripura? I'm gonna... I'll get into that in a second. Um, a local journalist claimed that specific individuals wanted to use the recent events in Bangladesh as an excuse to attack Muslim minorities in India. So, this is very interesting, actually. I was learning okay, about... Wait, the... be before, I just, we're talking about two separate things in two different places, right? We're talking about as a reaction to what happened in Bangladesh... In Tripura, India, um, something is happening in, in Tripur in India, right? Tripura, Tripura in India, right? So mm -hmm. it's a little bit confusing geographically for people who might not know. But good, continue. People in the left chat are saying I should pronounce it Tripura. Thank you. Um, so, so if you look at a map, like Bangladesh is surrounded basically on all sides, except for a little bit with Myanmar, um, by India. Right. So it's like on three sides, it's surrounded by India. It's basically inside India. Well, Tripura is actually, if you, so if Bangladesh is shaped kind of like this, like Tripura is actually right inside this little nook of Bangladesh. So tri Tripura itself is surrounded on three sides by Bangladesh, the way that Bangladesh is surrounded on three sides by India. Now in Tripura, 9% of the population is Muslim which is comparable, well, not, well, in percentage to the roughly 9% of Hindus that make up Bangladesh. And like I said, because it's surrounded on three sides by Bangladesh, um, it's actually, this state is extremely close to the Bangladeshi city of Kumila, where the violence against um, Hindus was originally sparked and where it was some of the worst and where the military was deployed to. Um, so that's a little bit of background. Um, I was, um, it's really interesting. So at first there wasn't a lot of news coming out about this. And then as I was researching today, I saw that Al Jazeera actually just published an extensive report of what happened in the area. Um, so when, see, look at it, it's like right in the nook. The little, little orange part or red part. That's Tripura. Wait, you're muted. Wait, and this white part is Bangladesh? Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> They're surrounded by Bangladesh. Okay, okay, okay. All right. This yeah, whole gray so... area is India, and this is this red part is the Tripura, tri Tripura part of India. Okay, okay. Yeah, that one state. It's a little, very little state. Okay. Um, when I was first reading about this news, I thought it was just like one mosque that was vandalized. Um, this report from Al Jazeera details like how severe it got. It said that um, at 16 different mosques were targeted um, and that um, they were they that the mob was even um tearing up trees that were worth thousands of dollars like in the area in front of the mosque's courtyard um broken windows and smashed ceilings um 
they were um the mob was shouting provocative derogatory slogans against the prophet suddenly 30 of 40 of them came towards the mosque and vandalize it um uh after tasking the mosque in chantila the rally the rally <laughs> the rally proceed proceeded towards roa a short distance away where a group of muslims had gathered at the local mosque some of those who were part of the rally wanted to march towards the mosque, but they were stopped by police and some of the Hindus of the village, um, who a uh, local shop owner said. Then a section of the mosque first, the, of the mob first attacked a couple of houses on the periphery of the village and started torching shops that belonged to Muslims. Approximately half a dozen of, in the market were either fully or partially burned. Um, one of them even served as a local BJP office. Even that was not spared said the local shop owner as he stood inside his charred shop where he sold footwear and clothes it went on for over an hour the police couldn't stop them so then they interviewed the police and the police said that they were outnumbered so the the vhp party did have a permit to um take on uh to to hold this rally however the people who showed up greatly outnumbered the actual number of people that they were supposed to be allowed to um you know, congregate and so that the police were outnumbered and they couldn't do anything about it. Um, uh, they, <clears throat> um, so it goes on with like a lot of different incidents, including homes being targeted. And like I said, 16 different mosques and even the United States commission on international religious freedom or USRIF for short, which is a, um, not, it's a nonpartisan, um, part of the state department. I'm a huge fan of Yusrif and the research that they um, put out and how they um, they make so much information available about religious freedom. They even issued a statement about what was happening in Tripura saying, um, Yusrif is particularly alarmed about the reports in Tripura of mobs desecrating mosques and torching property of Muslims. The Indian government must bring those responsible for instigating and engaging in religious violence to justify and must prevent further attacks. Oh, to just must bring them to justice. Sorry. Um, what's also particularly worrying is that as people were trying to um, raise awareness about this issue, um, the the people have started to face charges for posting videos of this. So on Thursday, Tripura police said it less. I can't talk today. It had arrested six people in various communal incident cases. Four others were arrested for being involved in spreading malicious propaganda for a view to creating hatred between two religious groups. Meanwhile, at least two New Delhi-based lawyers who were part of the fact-finding mission to Tripura have been booked under the stringent Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, a controversial anti-terror law. So now they're putting charges against people who were like posting about this online, basically. Cybercrime Tripura's official account said, these are fake videos being circulated under criminal conspiracy to disturb the peace and communal harmony in the state and defame the state governments and police. Police has registered criminal cases and suitable actions against the fake rumors being taken expeditiously. Which is nonsensical because non Al, Al Jazeera went and reported and you can see the photos of the they're like, yeah, they set our prayer mats on fire. They were going to set the mosque on fire, but we stopped them. Like, you can see pictures of their burned prayer yeah. rugs. Wait, fake videos? How? Do these people, like, have Hollywood-level capabilities of staging all of this? This is, like, moon landing stuff, kind of, like, conspiracy levels. It's... Um, I will say I do have, I mean, particularly because I only speak English, like when I'm consuming content from India, it is considerably more difficult for me to be able to ascertain based on what's in the footage, what's happening. Does it seem credible and in line with the rest of the story and the narrative being portrayed? Like, so that's something that's a lot harder for me to make those judgments. Right. But this can't all be fake. So to me, initially, this seems like, um, a, a blatant attempt to try to like cover up the situation or punish people who are talking about it at the very least, because in other ways they're saying, oh, we've like arrested so-and-so people, we're going to hold them accountable, yada, yada. But Armin, I would like to hear your thoughts on what I said earlier, where I said like, this is an example of how Hindu nationalists like fail Hindus and hurt Hindus. Yeah. Like how is it going? Okay. So we, 
the Hindus in Bangladesh deserve protecting and they're being mistreated and abused and they're in a very vulnerable position and they need all the activism and all the attention that we could muster. Okay. And we will, um, whenever um, it happens, something happens to Hindus in Bangladesh, we try to bring uh, attention to that and, you know, um, we try to cover it. Okay. And we have a, a you know, good enough community to make sure we don't miss that, right? So, and thank you for everybody who does help Susanna uh, in that regard, right? Um, but um, I don't understand how Hen the way Hindutva, well. I mean, I think we as non-Hindus do a better job at bringing attention to the plight of Hindus in Bangladesh and Hindutva, well, because I don't understand how attacking Muslims in India, how exactly that's going to help Hindus in Bangladesh. Like, can you, somebody help me figure out what is this going to do for Hindus in Bangladesh? Like you attacking Muslims in India, what exactly this is going to do for Hindus in Bangladesh? Can somebody explain this to me? Like, I mean, again, I want to be, I want us to help Hindus in Bangladesh, but how is Hindus for, like, is this not going to do the exact opposite? Do, do you not think that the Hindu, Hindutva is putting Hindus in Bangladesh at risk? Is this not, is Hindutva not anti-Hindu by doing these things? Like, doesn't this show to you that Hindutva has this political agenda to stir up hate, even if it comes at the expense of putting more Hindus at risk? So when you accuse us at being anti-Hindu because we're against Hindutva, we're like, we have to be like, no, you. Hindutva is anti-Hindu. We're anti-Hindutva partly because we care for Hindus in India, okay? Hindutva is bad for all Indians, including the Hindus. So don't tell us that we're anti-Hindu or anti-India because we're anti- We care for India, okay? Hindutva itself is willing to sacrifice the Hindus in Bangladesh just to stir up more hate. They want... I, I can say this with almost certainty, okay? Hindutva wants Muslims in Bangladesh to attack the Hindus. They need the hatred. They need the conflict. This is what they are. This is what fuels their movement. And they attack Muslims in India, hoping that this triggers more anti-Hindu attack in Bangladesh. They need this. Anyways, go on, Susanna. Well, one thing that I also thought was interesting about this is so since the um, violence from Durga Puja um, last month, I've been making an effort to learn more about Bangladesh because um, we have a member of our team who works with me closely and he's uh, an ex-Hindu from Bangladesh. And he's like, Susanna, you know, I basically very nicely, he was like, I don't think you guys could be covering this the best way possible. And he explained um, to be more in depth about the issue. And it, um, really inspired me to go learn more about the issue because I just get so curious about stuff I was never taught about in school. Right. Um, and it, I've been watching coverage from different news outlets and I was watching a panel on Al Jazeera talk about their position was basically that this has more to do with nationalism in many ways, um, specifically the violence that happened in Bangladesh. Um, and in the, Al the the very detailed Al Jazeera coverage of the Tripura um, incident, they had a huge section where they also talk about how what seems like it's religious on the front or on the face of it actually might have more um, of a, a political and nationalist angle to it. So, for example, I believe in Tripura um, that, well, I know that it's currently a BJP-ruled state. Um, for those who don't know, the BJP is the ruling party of India, and um, they also um, are a Hindu nationalist party. And so I believe that, so they, that it's currently um, uh, in power in Tripura, and it was elected, I think, for the first time in the most recent elections, unseating um, like the communists who had been in the area for a really long time. And so part of the analysts of this article was talking about how um, 
they the VHP are trying to just exert their power and influence in the area, and this is one of those means to do so, so that people, um, they're trying to co-opt like all Hinduness into this Hindutva image, and so that they can gain power in the area where they are still building um, their political roots or their power when, you know, they've just kind of been able to attain the, the level of power that they have now. Um, it, yes. Okay. Mishra is confirming that I was correct. Yeah. It was ruled by communists until the previous elections. And that's when the BJP came to power. Um, so, um, that's, what's so interesting when I've been watching coverage of this, um, many of the analysts will emphasize how it's actually just using religious collectivism to further their political agendas. Um, and I've been thinking about something else recently that I think you might find interesting, Armin. Um, so I'm a very self-reflective person. And personally, as more and more of our news coverage has been coming from the subcontinent, um, the Indian subcontinent, I've realized that I think I have um, a major hole in the way that I cover and talk about these stories. Um, and I think I have a blind spot. And my blind spot is that I don't understand collectivism. Um, because to me, I see a story like this and it's basically incomprehensible for me to understand how, so Hindus are, brutalized in, in Kumila and across the border, you're just going to go brutalize like your Muslim neighbors. Like it's, it's a mindset that I so far have no ability to really grasp or understand. Um, and so to illustrate this, um, I've realized that I need to make an effort to learn more about collectivism. So, for example, um, when I was earning my degree, I took a course on multicultural psychology, and we learn about these um, uh, these cultural markers. There's this um, famous psychologist called uh, Hofstede, and he created this these cultural scales. And um, you don't have to worry about the rest of this. I just want you guys to focus on this little section right here that says individualism. And in, it, this is really Zoom cool. In. You can actually pull any country. And the higher you score on this scale, the more individualistic of a country you are. So blue Zoom is in. Bangladesh, um, purple is India, and green is Pakistan. Wait. Can you zoom in? I can't. I can, but it's being really weird. When I zoom in, I can't oh. scroll. It's oh, super okay. annoying. I don't know what's going wrong. <laughs> okay. But, zoom um, out then. You know, so obviously this is um, Eastern cultures in general, and I am making a generalization, are more collectivistic. Um, obviously, Pakistan out of these three is the most collectivistic out of all of them. But by comparison, the United States is the most individualistic country in the world, like at 91. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. you know, I so I, I don't know. I just I just wanted to say that. Um, I think it's important for commentators or like content creators to talk about when, um, they think they could improve on something. And I think this is something I could improve on. So right now I'm making an effort to learn more about, um, a, a collectivist cultural orientation, because I think that would really improve the way I talk about these issues in the subcontinent. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, America, by the way, we're not, um, I'm not saying, uh, Obviously, you're not suggesting this, obviously, but I just want people to understand. None of this is innate. Um, the reason why United States is like like that is because of a, the historical nature of it being a country founded upon rebellion <laughs> uh, and, you know, founded on, at least, at least theoretically, on individual liberties. Like, this is, it's not like there is anything um about being a pakistani that makes you not able to be 
more individual like it's just more of a historical ac ac the accidental historical background that makes certain people more collectivist and other people more individualistic right like given diff giving certain conditions and di a different uh, history it could have been Pakistani people that were more individualistic and a a Americans that were more collectivist. Like, I just want, I just want people to be very mindful that we're not suggesting that any of these uh, qualities are innate within anybody. Okay. So this is just history and background. Um, also uh, regarding being a lot of atheists think more, well, actually now that's, that might be changing, but um, when atheism wasn't, more common um more atheists were individualists uh, rather than collectivists and this is why they i'm going to bring back the news article um this is why they might not understand that a lot of religion and nationalism it's not about belief it's not about making logical sense it's about a sense of belonging to a community so this is why a lot of atheists fail a lot of atheists that do not have any under feelings towards collectivism or can't even comprehend how collectivism how people people's minds work on their collectivism you cannot understand how people could believe in this religion or that religion or this tribe or that ethnicity or this country like how how are they judging somebody like they can like they can't comprehend like why are you judging these group of people for something they did they not do because they belong to this ethnicity or this country or that religion like it makes no sense but but eight but a lot of atheists fail to understand is that this is about being on one team against another team it's not about making making like islam making logical sense like a lot of muslims are not muslim because they think islam makes logical sense that's not how what that's not the process they went through to be, to stay muslim or stay christian or stay hindu it's like these are my people i have i belong to this team i'm not gonna go against islam because i'm not gonna abandon my people i'm not gonna leave this tribe okay so if you try to that's how if you if that's your mindset if you think about it from that perspective it makes more sense for why you would see like oh you hurt my people i'm going to hurt your people because it's not about individual versus individual it's about a collective versus another collective right so again that's a very uh, good way to make more sense of everything that is happening susanna so that's mm -hmm. very interesting that you're saying that um but i do also want to highlight the fact that um, I do want to emphasize about the, situ the situations that uh, Hindus are facing in Bangladesh, right? Because I know we brought attention to Hindutva in India because that's what the news is about. But we shouldn't let us that the fact that Hindutva in India is not responding well to the situation of Hindus in Bangladesh, that shouldn't distract us from highlighting that Hindus in Bangladesh are under really threatening conditions, right? Like, do not, again, please don't take like, a side on this, okay? This is not about being on the Hindu side or on the Muslim side, okay? This is a being on the side of the people who are vulnerable, okay? And that includes the Hindus in Bangladesh. It's really scary. Like, I, I feel afraid just imagining what it must be like to be a Hindu in Bangladesh. Like, the fact that people, could, a, a mob of Muslims could just come for you and there's very little you could do the law is not on your side you know i mean there there's it's it's so intimidating there's not that many ways i mean the law is on on the books is on your side but technically there's not much you can do about it like if you get abused or attacked by by some powerful muslims or a mob of muslims in, in bangladesh again not all muslims i'm just talking about the situation about some muslims in bangladesh okay the fact that you know that people can get away with just abusing like that or coming after your family even if you yourself you know you know don't care about your situation maybe you want to fight back you know that it's not just you it's your family it's so hard like and these are people not in economic conditions that can just move or go to a different place you know what i mean um this is very scary okay this is very scary you could feel you could highlight how bad hindutva is but please make sure that you don't use the Hindutva's horrible, horrible policies and 
evil ways as an excuse to ignore the plight of Hindus uh, under Muslim majority places. Okay, so there's that. Anyways, so I am very, very yeah. well said, Armin. No, thank you. Yeah. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.